Hello everyone, my name is Edith Bilgen. I'm one of the engineers on the Android Toolkit and Jetpack team, and today we're going to be talking about what's new in Room. The last time we talked about Room was at 2.2, at which point we were already supporting so many features. But then all of those features weren't enough, and you still thought that there was still room for improvements. So here's what we've been up to since. First up, we have auto migrations, a brand new feature that's bound to make migrations easy. So let's do a quick recap before we barge into the room. What is a migration? A database migration allows you to update your database schema with any changes between versions while avoiding data loss. During a migration, Room will check and validate the updated schema. The schema can also be exported if the user sets a flag in the database definition. Before 2.4, you had to implement a manual migration class in which you would write and execute all the SQL statements needed to migrate between versions of your database. This meant that you would risk ending up implementing a migrate function involving a lot of long and complex SQL queries, increasing the risk for any errors. Let's walk through an example of this scenario. Say you have a database with two tables, artist and track. Let's say you would like to rename the table track to song. If you were to make this change using a manual migration, this is how that would work. You can see here that you will have to manually write and execute the statement to perform this change. However, with auto migrations, you can handle this change by simply defining an auto migration in your database definition and providing the exported schemas of the two versions. The auto migration API will handle the rest by generating and implementing the migrate function for you, complete with writing and executing all the necessary SQL statements. Now, let's go one step further and say we want to change one of the fields in the artist table, renaming singer name to artist name. While this may seem like something trivial, SQLite doesn't have an API for this, so we will need to go through the 12-step generalized alter table procedure. Using manual migrations, this would mean that you would have to manually write and execute all the SQL statements associated with the 12 steps. So here's how that would go. You would take the table you want to perform the change on, you would create a table that has the structure you want after the change has been made. As you can see here, the singer name column has been renamed to artist name. You would then insert the data from the old table to the new one to prevent any data loss. You would drop the old table, and you would lastly rename the new table to the original name of the table, which was artist, followed by a foreign key check. Looking at this in terms of code, using a manual migration for straightforward cases like this, where there's literally just one change done between versions, can be very verbose and error prone. We definitely don't want to write all that, so let's use auto migrations. In the same example of a column rename, Room can't handle this out of the box. The reason for this is because of how my auto migrations are generated under the hood. Room goes through the schemas of the two versions of the database, making comparisons to detect changes between them. In the case where a column and, or a table has been renamed, Room cannot clarify what changes occurred. Has it been deleted and a new one added, or has it been renamed? And the same problem applies for a deletion of a column or a table. In these ambiguous cases, Room needs a bit of help from you. More precisely, you need to define an auto migration spec. The auto migration spec is an interface for defining auto migration specifications, clarifying these ambiguous scenarios. This is done by annotating the spec with the relevant change annotations. So here in this case, we have a renamed column annotation where we provide the table name, the original name of the column, and the updated name. Like this, the code is cleaner and easier to read and understand. As a bonus, if you have any additional tasks to execute after the migration has been completed, you can use the onPostMigrate function of the auto migration spec to run them. When you've finished implementing your auto migration spec, you will need to provide it to the database definition and define an auto migration. Now, once again, with the two schemas of the versions you want to migrate between provided, the auto migration API will handle the rest by generating and implementing the migrate function for you. Going back to the ambiguous change scenarios that require user input, these are all the available annotations. Even more, if you have multiple changes that require user input within the same migration, you can use repeatable annotations to provide the needed clarifications. All other changes will be handled out of the box without any input needed. Let's say you've started using auto migrations in your implementations and you want to test that they're working properly. Well, good news. To test auto migrations, you can actually use the existing migration test helper API. No change needed. 
Migration Test Helper will automatically run and validate all auto migrations, and no input will be needed from you. Under the hood, if auto migrations are present, they will be automatically added to the list of migrations to be run and validated. It is important to note that user provided migrations are of higher priority, meaning that if you were to define an auto migration going between two versions that already had a custom migration defined, then the custom migration will be preferred over the auto migration. Next up, we have another big feature we have made room for, relational query methods. Let's say we have the same database from before with the same tables, which are now artist and song. And we want to get a collection that is a mapping of artists to songs. Looking at this with some example data in our tables, this would mean that Purple Lloyd would get matched with their hit songs, such as Another Tile in the Ceiling or The Great Pig in the Sky, and ABCD would get matched with their songs, Back in White and Highway to Heaven. If we're using relation and embedded, this is how the mapping would work. As you can see here, we create a brand new data class, Artists and Songs, where an artist is related to a list of songs. In fact, if we were to represent other relationships, we would need to create additional data classes to represent them, which can easily raise verbosity problems. Relation is meant to be used for simple cases where you would only have a few straightforward relationships in your database. Since in relation there's no filtering, sorting, grouping, or composed keys, you're limited in the relationship result but it is a quick and easy way to get the job done for simpler tasks. In order to support these missing features, we didn't expand on relation because it would involve complicating the annotation and move users away from SQL. Room wants you to embrace SQL to its full potential as it is very powerful. So let's look at how Room solves this problem with a brand new feature. To represent the same relationship shown previously between artists and their songs, we can now write a simple DAO method with a return type of a map. You only need to provide the query and the return type. Room will take care of the rest. Under the hood, what Room will do is find artist and song in the cursor and put them in the key and value. In this case, we have a one-to-many mapping where an individual artist is mapped to a collection of their songs. You can also have a one-to-one -one mapping like so. You can actually have a lot of flexibility in what you can use within the mapping. This is possible with the magic of the map info annotation. Map info is a helper API for user input in terms of clarifications similar to the auto migration change annotations we talked about. It allows you to clarify exactly what you would like to do with the information returned in the cursor from a query. With the map info annotation, you can specify which column you want to use for the key and value mappings of your queries in the output data structure. It is important to note that the type being used for the key must implement equals and hash code functions, as this is crucial for the mapping process. Here's an example in which the artist name has been used as the key. Here's another example in which an artist is mapped to a list of their song names. And lastly, here's an example where an artist name is mapped to a list of their song names. The map info annotation gives you the flexibility to use specific columns instead of the entire data class for a more customized mapping. Another added benefit of relational query methods is that now we can support more data operations. Here's an example of grouping that is now seamlessly possible with this new feature. And here's an example of filtering that is now possible. Lastly, it's important to note that multimap is a core return type and can be wrapped with the various observable types that are already supported by Room. So relational query methods allow you to easily define as many relations as you want in your database. Wow, that was a lot of big news. But we have room for more features. Here's a lightning round of some of the smaller cool features that we've added to Room. First up, enum type converters. Room will now default to using an enum to string and vice versa type converter if none is provided. If a type converter for an enum already exists, Room will prioritize using it over the default one. Query callbacks. Sometimes you want to log queries to see what's going on in your database. We added callbacks to the Room database's builder method, so when the database is running queries, it'll get logged. We have also extended some of our API support. Room now supports native paging 3.0 APIs and removes the previous workaround. Important to note that you will now need to depend on a new artifact called Room Paging. We've also added support for RxJava 3 and note that you will now need to depend on a new artifact, Room RxJava 3. Last up, 
Kotlin Symbol Processing, for short, KSP. Room 2.4 now includes support for KSP, a native replacement for CAPT that runs annotation processors as a part of Kotlin compilation. Moving to KSP is very simple. Just remove the Kotlin CAPT plugin, unless you have other annotation processors using CAPT, and replace it with the KSP plugin. Similarly, in your dependencies, add room to the KSP configuration instead of CAPT, and you're done. So why switch to KSP? Well, KSP provides up to two times faster compilation for Room, speeding up your builds and saving valuable development time. As KSP directly reads Kotlin code, Room has a much better understanding about the Kotlin code like nullability and generates code accordingly, preventing null pointer exceptions at runtime and much more. As KSP becomes stable, we will expand Room's Kotlin support for long-evaded features like value classes support and generating Kotlin code. Auto migrations, relational query methods, KSV. This was a lot. We hope you're just as excited as we are about all of these room renovations. Do check them out and start using them in your apps. Thanks for watching.